10 seconds. Oblumi, good afternoon. Welcome to the Do Not Annex Show. I am your host. My name is Margaret Nixana. We are broadcasting live out of the Inuvalu Communication Society. Sorry, that's incorrect. <laughs> the Inuvalu <laughs> Cultural Resource Center located here in Inuvik. Um, on today's episode, we have part two from last week's episode. And back with us, we have Barb Malagana. Can you say Thank your you. name again for the, the proper way? Oh, Barb Memorana? Yes, I like hearing it, but I can't say it. (laughs) So, so, how are you? I'm good. A little chilly, but I'm good. Yeah, you had a good week? Yeah, I had a really nice week. I ended up with a cold for a bit. but Oh, yeah. yeah. We were talking about it. We say we hear it's going around. Yeah, Yeah. it's a really dry cold. Um, Did anyone talk, like, did anyone see that you were on the show? Did you talk to anybody about it? Yeah, I talked to a lot of people over the weekend and on Monday. Yeah. And I told them you guys have a show going. Yeah. And it's um, live Wednesdays from 4.30 yeah. until about 6 or so. <laughs> well, live from 5 to 6. Okay. Yeah, we work from 4.30 to 6. So. <laughs> yeah. So today we are going to do last week. We had worked with the seal skin. We're making seal skin slippers. And on today's episode, we are going to do the cutting and the sewing. Mm -hmm. So do you want to do your cutting first? Sure. And then I'll do my sewing second. Yeah, when you're cutting out, you Mm -hmm. try and use the edge Mm -hmm. of the... um, drawing yeah the tracing because when you start sewing your stitches take up a bit of the uh, And we had talked about it last time and you said we never ever waste no. waste any material. You don't waste material. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't remember if I asked you this last time, but who taught you how to make this pattern? My mom. She said you always watch and always check to make sure you you know how big your feet are, mm-hmm. lengthwise and widthwise. Oh, okay. Yeah. And with these the pieces, mm-hmm. like if you wore out somewhere in the front, there's a good yeah he's here yeah yeah to patch it with Mm -hmm. and it's the same color yeah Back then, the lady skin cutting knife for cutting out patterns was really sharp. It was always sharp. Yeah. Do you get to do a lot of sewing on your own time? Yes, I do. I I like sewing.
did you enjoy? Um, so this past weekend, when was it? June. Was it June fifth? We had any Valoa Day. Mm hmm. Did you get to enjoy the festivities? Oh yes, the yeah. food was so good. It was so cold. <laughs> it was so cold. <laughs> Even with these two days to use some for around their wrist. Oh, okay. it's really. Another quiet episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just busy watching. <laughs> Who did you learn how to sew from? Um, Who taught you how to sew? Well, people in Saks Harbor, uh, when we, we were on with Bambi, we talked a lot about how they had, like, the Community Corp had a sewing club. Mm -hmm. And I went and... Um, there was Betty Haugiak, and who else was running it? Brenda Lucas was the instructor. Mm -hmm. And um, I've always known how to do stitches. Like I remember growing up and being able to do stitches, but actually like making patterns or cutting up patterns and how to tack them together mm -hmm. that we learned I learned from Brenda Lucas in the sewing club oh that's nice yeah mm. I haven't sewn in like 10 years though <laughs> when I made the mitts with Bambi that was the first time I had sewn in a long time Ooh. so we have and you'll notice in each different part of the coast you'll see a lot of different styles of um, patterns yeah yeah mm -hmm. some more simpler and some more complex here you can use and then Thank there's you. the needles here and i am going to get started on drawing yeah the needle there And with the thread, this thread here is so waxy, but back then they used to use some sinew. Mm -hmm. And it was usually ma made from caribou or muskox. Yeah. Yeah, they dry it up, clean it up, and then they dry it up. After it dry, you have to constantly make the uh, dry <laughs> stuff fall off. Yeah. And then after that you start parting it up and make it the thickness you want and yeah mm -hmm. did you ever do that mm -hmm. 
Really? We grew, had to um, make uh, th sinew thread. We just have to, on our uh, free time when we're not working with skins or yeah. other uh, animals. And I when we start working with meat, that's what we used to have to do was take um, sinew and dry it up. And mm -hmm. I want the fur to go this way, right? Yes, you want no to go forward. To go forward? Yes. Okay. Yes. This way. Yes. Yeah. To go forward, not okay. Yes. You always okay. want the fur to be going downward. Okay. I'm gonna be using the middles. You know what you can do? Oh, sorry. That's okay. Before we get started, they usually line up the yeah. color. You see there. And here. So that when you trace your pattern, yeah. your um, skin color is all even. Oh, okay. Yeah. They usually mark the center. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then like this. Yeah. Which you're going to have to patch. Can I do it this way? Sure, you can. Yeah? Mm-hmm. A little off. I don't mind doing it that way. Sure. Yeah. Twenty ninety. Thank you. Okay. You remember those old pilot biscuit boxes? Yes. Yeah, we used to have to collect those to um, keep for um, patterns. Or for drawing and coloring, because <laughs> we had not much paper. Yeah. It was so valuable back then. Anything you got was so valuable. Do you mind if I start stitching? Go ahead. You can go okay. right ahead. I'm just going to put the two sides together. My nose is all wants to run right now. That needle is too thick. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> and when they had needles, my nose just started running. <laughs> Yeah. When they when they had needles, mm -hmm. they made them with um fish bone. Fish fish bone. Mm -hmm. I thought it was like maybe a caribou. No. But I guess that wouldn't be. Uh, the fish bones used to um clean them off mm -hmm. and carve a little eye into it and dry them up. And once they're dry, so you, crafty, hey. You may you use them as needles. Are people really never let anything go to waste? No. Uh, um, animals' bone parts were always used for something. Mm -hmm. The um, caribou mm -hmm. and I forgot, it's like the blade on here. Mm -hmm. They used to use that for scraping. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Or shoveling. It was like a shovel. 
One thing I'd really like to learn how to do is um, use an ikun uh, tanning. And softener? Yeah. That's one thing I think I'd really like to learn how to do. It's really simple once you learn how to use the ulu. Yeah. Uh, um, ikun is really, really easy to use. Yeah. <laughs> um, that I think I would like to learn how to do and then how to make a, a mulk are two things oh you'd have fun if you learn how to make an ikun it's not hard to learn how to make an amakok yeah mm -hmm. my mom is trying to teach us how to make covers right now how nice. Yeah. Our house was like, um, she was in town for the weekend, and I have two sisters, mm -hmm. and we were all busy <laughs> sewing something. One stole, sewing a grad stole, one sewing earrings, my mom and sister making a, a, a old Mother Hubbard style cover. Mm hmm my house was so busy i said it looked like a factory just <laughs> sometimes so when it's a traditional it's so nice you get a lot done yeah mm -hmm. we did You never use um you never do use a thimble? No. Not even the leather one? Mm. Once in a while I'll use a leather one, but mm -hmm. I'd rather I I could feel my needle. Yeah. I used to have my own leather one, a moose head one. Mm -hmm. And it was really nice. It's probably somewhere still tucked away in my sewing bin I really gotta find that bin <laughs> and it's always nice to have a few yeah few done there I got one done I can't wait until the weather warms up a little bit. Oh, it's going to be so nice to be out there. I just want to go like on the highway and have a picnic. Mm -hmm. And it's so nice to eat out there. It is, yeah. I love having campfire food. On the coast when we had no um, cooking pots and that. That's why we used to have collect um, flat rocks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Flat rocks and cook on those. Mm -hmm. Put them on oh the fire. Oh my goodness, you should. You got to taste the fish cooked on it. It's really, <laughs> it's just like fried. Yeah. Yeah. No grease, no, no water. Just on a hot rock. Mm-hmm. Have you ever tried um, bannock cooked on a stick on a fire? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've never had that, but I heard it's really good. It's really good. <laughs> I think it's the most healthiest way to cook bannock um, or bread. My uncle Lawrence, I remember trying his bannock once. He made um, baking soda bannock. I think he, I think he fried it. It mm -hmm. was so good. <laughs> he made it and gave me some once when we were going camping. Mm -hmm. It's like, I didn't know you can make bannock. It was so good. Lawrence um, Amos. I don't know how to say his his new, his new uh, 
and you developed a name. He changed it, his legal name, back to the traditional one. Dama? Huh? Dama? I can't remember how to say it. Bambi said it when she was here on our episode. Ooh. Yeah. And A lot of people learn. are changing their names back to the traditional name. I was talking to Nunky about that, and he was saying, like, because Greg and I are going to get married, mm -hmm. and his last name's Elias, and he said, I think he said Deltuk might be the original name for Elias, Ooh. the traditional one. I mm -hmm. have it on my voice audio to remember how to say it. <laughs> we have one more seal skin I could use. My given name is Ikurana. Do you have a given name? What is yours? Mine is Ikurana. What does that mean? Um, <laughs> like a drill. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like a drill. <laughs> Always going. <laughs> um, my <laughs> name is Igalik. I was named after, um, I think her name was Lena Pekiak. I think, mm. I think that was her name. Do you know um, Frank Pekiak and Ernest Calvin Albo mm -hmm. Pekiaks? Their mom. Mm. Yeah, she had 17 children. Wow. And she always, always offered like she was very kind to my dad very very kind to him and when my dad said that he was going to have a baby he asked her if, if it's a girl can I name her after you and she was I guess she was really happy mm -hmm. because whenever I see any of the cookie X they call me Igalik <laughs> same as their mom I never met her but that's who I was named after and uh, from what I know, she was very kind, and she always helped people. I do not think I have enough of this middle one. She was really nice. She was so helpful. Was she? Mm -hmm. That's that's just when what we I used to go hearing. to Tuck. Yeah. We used to go to the first shop or to the sewing place, and mm -hmm. she'd be with the Mona talking around. Yeah. Oh, she. She'd have so interesting stories. <laughs> I do not think I have enough of the middle, the dark, to make a second pair. So what I think I might do is just make one side for now. Mm -hmm. And then you can um, get another seal skin and use the middle. Yeah. I think that's what I'll do. Because yes. I, I want to give them away as a gift. Mm -hmm. They're going to be really... A really nice gift cup. Look at this. Yeah, look at, and look at I the kivyok underneath. I know. It's called kivyok even in seal? Mm -hmm. That's it's just a undercoat? Mm -hmm. oh. It's a down. Well, I knew it was kivyok from muskog. <laughs> <laughs> Every <laughs> animal has kivyok. <laughs> you learn something new all the time. <laughs> I knew it's kivyok from... <laughs> we used to collect um, goose and... Muskok and <laughs> <laughs> off the land. I'll remember that mm -hmm. when I um look for another seal skin to make sure it's like nice, like similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I have enough middles. That's okay though. I'll just push this off to the side. And so I'll just sew this one for now. And then. I'll Unless you want. To do this one. Well, I could no, do my no. one side. No, you I'll could do I'll this, and I'll. Okay. I got well. I got skins at home. I can. I can do. Well, I, I could can get. Use. I could get skins from home too. Mm. And that way, you'll have a pair to give away. <laughs> Thank you. You know that's something that um, we used to do a lot back then. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Make. When you see someone have something that's not, it doesn't fit or it doesn't, yeah. if it's so worn out mm -hmm. and they're not abundant, you can much. 
Um, you have to share. You have to help. That's called surviving. Yeah. I, um, do you know Donna Kugiak mm -hmm. from Sex Harbor? She has a granddaughter, Emery, and her granddaughter is a little bit older than my daughter. And I dropped the needle. I got the Oh, I got it. And then, anyways, Donna made a hat, a fur hat for mm -hmm. her granddaughter. Didn't fit her, so she gave it to my oh, my daughter. Nice. And then she made a pair of mucklucks. Mm -hmm. Didn't fit her daughter. Gave it to my daughter. Oh. <laughs> I told her, "Okay, now make a parky and make it a little <laughs> bit too small." She just laughed at me. <laughs> But I still, I still kept them and let my son use That's them. That's what's so nice about the um, small community. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she just... They help out so much. You be so undisbelieved with what, yeah. what they do. If they see you not wearing proper gear or attire with mm -hmm. with the weather, yeah, you'll be going out the door with the right kind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she just <sighs> gave them to her. She'd call and say, where's Kendall? We have donuts. <laughs> Running down to go and visit and have donuts. <laughs> See, with this, while you're wearing it, mm -hmm. it'll all go yeah. back the way it is. But mm -hmm. Or you can just play around with it and it'll go in. Mm -hmm. That's what's so nice about working with skins. I don't know how many times I made a boo-boo before I even learned to do it the right way. <laughs> <laughs> One time I did, um, I think it was mitt where all the fur ended up going sideways instead yeah. of forward. Yeah. And then two same sides of the palm. <laughs> and just having to redo. <laughs> Can I just say you have some strong hands because <laughs> this hurts. <laughs> what? I can barely push oh. the needle through. <laughs> and you're already done that one. Do you want... To do the backing on this one? Uh, you can. Okay. I want to sew. Sew with you. Yeah. Oh, didn't go through. I'm just gonna mark where I'm gonna pin before I start sewing. I think I'm getting allergies with its spring. My mom went to Whitehorse and she said it's yellow pollen everywhere. <laughs> And when we when we'd be sewing skins too, they'd always be telling us um, burn spots like tough spots mm -hmm. that weren't done properly. Mm -hmm. Burn. Yeah, the skin. How come? Because it wasn't done properly or worked on properly, mm. 
or if you went and got one that was tanned with too much chemicals. Mm -hmm. The last episode when I was sewing with Bambi, mm -hmm. I got really quiet. <laughs> <laughs> really quiet. You just, just got right into the sewing. Yeah. Like we could just put the radio on and have a cup of tea and just be quiet mm -hmm. and sew. And when I was in Sex Harbor and we had that sewing, all the ladies would get together in a tiny little building mm -hmm. and we'd all just sit there and sew and sew and sew it was really nice they even said um that first time you had to sew there mm -hmm. and not take your stuff home and sew it because everyone would just finish it all at home <laughs> <laughs> so they said just leave it here and we'll all sew together And what's nice about that, too, is um, if you get stuck, you have help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or if you made a mistake, somebody else can see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really need to start practicing again. My stitches are not as nice as they used to be. Yeah. I'll give myself grace because... This is, well, besides those mitts, this is the second time I'm sewing in a long time. I Me, mean, in the winter time, I like to sew a lot. Yeah. I really think I'm having allergies right now. My nose is just runny. No, oh, you know the quick stop today? Yeah. I went by there and at lunchtime. <coughs> this guy called um, number 64 number 64 and this kid <laughs> said bingo <laughs> <laughs> i thought that kid. was so cute <laughs> i guess it was their order mm -hmm. <laughs> that's funny do you remember they used to be able to talk on the intercom there yeah i remember when mm -hmm. they used to call on the intercom Or how it looked before it got renovated. It had that little ramp in the middle for where Quick Stop was. That separated dry good and grocery side. Yeah, it was um, a black building. It was, yeah. Yeah. But that's where everybody went from school. Yeah. We're all ready. And the grapevine. Or was it grapevine? The one <laughs> this across northern. Do you remember? Fast food? Yeah. Fast food? Munchies where it used to be. <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> Munchies, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's like days when they had two goes. Yeah. Like like mm -hmm. 15, 17 years ago. Everyone used to go to two goes after prom in their prom dresses. I'm talking <laughs> like 2004, 2003. 
used to live in Tuck and thought my older cousins were so cool. (laughs) (laughs) Do you remember there used to be a bowling alley on top of Munchies? Mm Mm-hmm. Sorry, guys. It's heads down, busy sewing. <laughs> <laughs> you're already... Oh, you're just tacking? No, I tacked the front so oh, I could okay. finish the back down and then oh, start okay. around. Okay. It must take you no time at all to whip up a pair of slippers. Mm-hmm. Especially when it's cold. Yeah. <laughs> We used to always share ideas to as to what you could put on or what kind of pattern or print. Yeah. Cause people get like really crafty nowadays. Mm-hmm. Do you ever see... You have see all a... the tools you could work <laughs> with now. Back then you just had an ulu or a knife. <laughs> Do you see how neat her stitches are? (laughs) Practice. Lots of practice. I'm just watching. They're very neat. We used to have to mend a lot of worn out clothing. (laughs) Make sure they're tight so draft don't get in. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure there's no air vents. (laughs) My first slippers I ever made, I was so proud. I was so happy to be done because mm-hmm. my mom and dad used to take my sewing apart if it wasn't done properly. Oh, no. And, oh, I was so happy. I stood up and my whole duffel was sewn onto my pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were seeing that, yeah. <laughs> Your dad made you take it apart? <laughs> yeah. Did your mom see them? When they got done again, yeah. Oh. But not... Did he laugh? Oh, he was just killing himself laughing when I stood up and the (laughs) duffel was attached to my leg. That's funny. Even the uh, Mother Hubbard Parkas, too. Mm -hmm. When we first started learning how to make them. Mm Mm-hmm. We used to forget to mark the front. <laughs> <laughs> and then the hood would be backwards, oh, so no. your face would be covered like yeah. in a mask. Yeah. Do you remember um, Jessie Colton? Mm-hmm. She's passed on. When me and my sister-in-law, my sister-in-law is not from here. She's from Prince Edward Island. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to learn how to make parkas. This must have been 2010, maybe. And I remember when we didn't have a pattern, but we wanted to make them. We had the material, but no pattern. Mm -hmm. And I was telling Jesse, my nanak at the time gave me Jesse's number and told me to go visit Jesse. She'll help me with a pattern for a parka. And... I was because I I was talking to my nanak and I was telling her, you know, me and Nikki are going to make a parka. We want to try make parkas our own Mm -hmm. with the zipper. And I told my nanak how we were doing it because she asked where we got a pattern from. I said we don't have a pattern. We just had bed sheets, (laughs) and me and Nikki were laying down like this and drawing on each other, (laughs) like our silhouette to try and get. 
a pattern <laughs> made and I told that to Jesse and Jesse's like, yeah, that's what we used to do long ago. <laughs> like, like long, long ago, try mm-hmm. make your own pattern. And then she gave me a pattern. <laughs> the parka never got made. But it was nice to sit with her. I don't know how many parkas I've made in my life, but my first time trying to, it took me a while before I got it to learn how to do it. Yeah. I don't know how a, a few times too I've sewn the uh, arm, the sleeve, mm-hmm. onto the head part. <laughs> <laughs> and then have to take it all apart. Oh my or, goodness. you know, those the ones with the, um, the Mother Hubbard style. Mm-hmm. Oh, with one time skirt. I could. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I couldn't figure out how in the world they um, made it so crimped up. Pleating? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was looking at one for a quite a while and then I said to my um, sister Bev how did she make it so <laughs> ugly like that <laughs> now it's trying to you find a word yeah not ugly ugly yeah how did she make it so uneven like that and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she said you have to uh, fold it over each stitch you're gonna take yeah Oh my goodness, that was so hard. (laughs) That's what my mom and my sister were doing. They were doing pleading. Oh, one time my mom just killed me laughing. She said, because she only used those Singer sewing machines, those hand ones. Mm -hmm. She got a new electric one and we hooked it up and got it ready for her to use. She called and she said, uh, I learned how to use that sewing machine, the electric one. Mm-hmm. So I said, yeah, I'll come over and I'll see what you're doing. Mm-hmm. She was making, um, or she was mending pants. She had it going and she was doing good, but then she forgot about the foot pedal. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was hanging on to pants. It was really going. She's like, come in, you, come in, you. And she started going up. <laughs> Holding it up, that thing was still going. Huh. She didn't know how to shut it off, so she threw it on the floor. Honestly. <laughs> I went and pulled the plug. <laughs> she said, in uh, her language, that simple. <laughs> <laughs> that simple. You just need to unplug it. She could have just kicked her foot and the mm-hmm. plug would have came off. <laughs> there, I did one. Yeah. It's okay? That's good. Okay. That's and the... remember, once you start wearing, mm-hmm. and you start using them and they get into wear, all these are going to come into play. Yeah, because yeah, I was like, like that. I remember when I did the mitts, I would mm-hmm. go like that and take all the little hairs out they of the all stitches. And they go the way they need to go. Yeah. And if you want the fur to go right away the way you want it to go, just wet mm-hmm. it and get one of those old fashioned combs or a fork and just yeah. do that. Mm-hmm. And when they're too not, you don't like the way it's not going the way you want it. Mm-hmm. Just wet it and then yeah, comb it all one way. Yeah, that's what's so nice about um fur. I think it looks good, especially <laughs> seal skin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's do the back side now. Mm-hmm. I so love sewing. I want to learn how to do um, embroidery. I seen on um, Facebook the other day someone did 
was selling the wall hangings and mm-hmm. they used I think um felt or Stroud Stroud there was three Ulu ones and three drum ones wall hangings oh. with the felt or the Stroud and the pictures on it mm-hmm. and I thought I'd like to do something like that but with embroidery oh that um, would look really beautiful I'm gonna learn how to do embroidery next just I I just like challenges <laughs> Like to learn how. Mm-hmm. When I was asking about um, embroidering, that one lady, she said, uh, is there a specific stitch you want to learn? I said, stitch? Is there only <laughs> one kind of stitch we, because, you know, you, you used to learning just one mm-hmm. way, yeah, the way yeah. everybody did it, was just stitching it. And when she asked that, I said, what do you mean by learning how to stitch? Isn't there only one way to <laughs> stitch? And she's like, no, you could do a blanket stitch, you could do a chain stitch. And I'm like, What? <laughs> So Where did funny. all these stitches come out from? Yeah. And she said, uh, if you learn how to quilt, make a quilt, you'll learn a lot of different stitching. Mm-hmm. I said, <laughs> show me a chain stitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's like, do you have a needle and a thread? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would be nice to learn all those different kind of stitching they're talking about. Yeah. All the time. And when I used to go to talk to to the um, fur shop or to that sewing center, mm-hmm. they u- when they're embroidering, they used yarn. I used mm-hmm. to watch them take a so thick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've had that done, um, Edith Helgeak. Mm -hmm. I bought a pair of mukluks off of her, and I think that's what she used. I think she used yarn, Mm -hmm. because it was really thick. Yeah. They were beautiful purple. It's very rare you ever find some now made with yarn. Yeah. Just with that um, embroidered thread. Mm Mm-hmm. I know there's lots of people who are really talented with doing embroider mm-hmm. I just I can't even <laughs> fathom all the time to practice how to do stitches so nice especially those French knots okay you just said another one French knots mm-hmm. yeah uh-huh. what's what's a French knot mm-hmm. so like a French knot is when you like Oops, you like poke through and then it's just like you're gonna do a knot Mm -hmm. like a one bunch of winding and then you got to pull it all the way to the bottom all those little lines and then you poke through but it sounds easy but you have to um you have to make sure every single one is the same size like so that's the challenging part I think is making sure they all look the same Mm -hmm. yeah Wow. So it, they they kind of look like beads when they're done. Like they kind of oh. look like beads. Oh, the little round. Mhm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like some people are really good at those. Um, I know, like, my auntie Glenna's good at doing embroidery, and her sisters. Mhm. Um, they're all really good at doing embroidery work. And some of the ladies can do amazing French knots. But they do, they kind of look like beads and they look really challenging. Who's going to teach you how to make that wool? The emerald? Mm-hmm. I don't know yet. I want to learn how. I know Nunki knows how to do it. 
um, that's Galen said she Galen Raddy mm -hmm. said that she went she did them with Nunki and um, they made a whole bunch of them once. My nanny Persis Grubin, she made beautiful mm -hmm. amaluks. She was well known for her amaluks. Yep. She made me mine when I was a little baby, like a toddler. I had a big, I have a picture of myself in a big rough. <laughs> it's a big mm -hmm. challenge making one of those because you have to align the black yeah. and the white mm -hmm. and the silver. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, we're already down to 10 wow. minutes. Mm -hmm. I think I might need three part shows <laughs> to do sewing projects. That'd be nice. That or take it home and work on part of it at home. <laughs> yes. I like the idea of start to finish on the show though. I've been non-stop sewing, I feel like. Well, I was beading before this. Mm -hmm. All day beading, making earrings. That's one thing I want to learn how to do is bead. I feel like it's so simple, but it took me a long time. Like, I'm not a, a professional by any means at all. Mm -hmm. I've made probably, like, about 150 pairs. Um... But it took me a very long time to learn how to do the brick stitch pattern, mm -hmm. brick stitch beading. And when me and my cousin Jocelyn at Christmas time, she said she wanted to learn how to do brick stitch earrings two weeks before Christmas and make her daughter's earrings. and. I said, okay, I, I've always wanted to learn how. I'll learn how with you. And she stayed up all night watching videos <laughs> how to do them online. And I did the same thing. I didn't stay up all night, not like she did. But I did stay up late to learn how. And I started making my first pair of earrings. Tiniest little earrings. Teeny tiny. And to make my very very first one side mm -hmm. took me four hours Whoa. four hours watching the same youtube video 10 15 seconds over and over and over to try and learn how to do it because i was doing it by myself and my earring they're supposed to go like this like start in the middle and go up mm -hmm. my earring started going like that. <laughs> and I got so frustrated and I was like that's it I quit I can't learn how to do these earrings my cousin looked at it she never ever made earrings in her life like not those ones mm -hmm. looked at it took apart a few beads and made it straight for me and I oh. I said you're so clever <laughs> I probably would have never kept sewing if if she didn't fix them for me because I was so frustrated, but it did. It took four hours start to finish my very first, first one side. And then you know what? I dropped it on the floor and I didn't think anything of it. And then my boy was two. He found it and he chewed it. Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> so I have my very first one. It's a little chewed up <laughs> earring. I said, I'm going to frame it. <laughs> It's okay. It wasn't it wasn't that like I knew how to do it, but it wasn't the nicest. So I just um I switched my thread and I started over again and it didn't take 4 hours. <laughs> my friend too, she re when she came up up north, mm -hmm. she really wanted to learn that um 
porcupine yes. quill. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She learned to do that and the tufting. I want to learn how to do tufting. Me too. I I wish I went with her when she was um taking the classes. Yeah. You, my mom learned how to do it, I think. And tufting. Too. The flowers are so beautiful mm -hmm. when they do them. Yeah. Yeah, I know my mom can do tufting. Mm -hmm. I definitely, mm -hmm. definitely want to learn how. My uncle said, anything you need, Margaret. Well, he calls me Judy. Anything <laughs> you need, Judy, <laughs> just let me know. Because he said he would help with getting the care woofer. Mm -hmm. Is there a specific part they use for the tufting? Um, the long white part right here. Oh. They use for the, the tufting and then you could dye it. But mm -hmm. technically you could use any of the fur from the caribou. Ooh. But I was told to keep the long white parts. Yeah, yeah. Or our time is running. So this is what I managed to get done. And there, I'm half done. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what kind of um, what kind of uh, trim you want to put on it? I think I'm going to use the, uh, the beaver. beaver. Yeah. Yes. We can go ahead and cut that out for you sure. when the show ends. But yeah, they'll be like, mm -hmm. see, what can I show? Mm -hmm. Let's just go like that. They'll be like that, I think. If we ever do another showing one, we'll do it a little bit before. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they'll be nice little slippers. And then put the beaver around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How it's going to look with the beaver on Yeah. It. Yeah. And this is really nice, too. Yeah. Nice and dark. Mm-hmm. Very thick. I think that'll look mm -hmm. really nice. In wintertime, they used to put them on the... At the edge mm -hmm. to make them a little higher. And yeah, that's what I was thinking. A little bit of canvas mm -hmm. on the top, and then you know, not really canvas. You could just enlarge your um duffel inside oh, yeah. or your yeah, and that way it'll be warm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Barb, for coming in. Thank you. Yeah, we'll finish these off camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, and thank you all for joining in on this episode of the Do Not a Nick show. We'll see you in the next one. Well, have a good evening. I hope you enjoyed. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nice, hey? Yeah. Uh...